Hey witches, today I have a very interesting video for you guys. We're going to talk about signs your home is filled with dark energy, with lower level entity. I'm going to give you signs, I'm going to tell you why, I'm going to tell you where, and I'm going to tell you what to do about it to claim your home back. If this is something that interests you, stick around because it's coming up right now. Well, hello, my beautiful witches. Blessed be. This is White Raven over here. Today is Monday, so happy magic Monday to all of you guys. What an interesting video I have for you today, witches. And let me tell you, and I'm going to warn you before I go ahead into the video, because it's going to be a little bit long. Just because you are experiencing one or two of the things that I'm going to be discussing in here, do not mean that your house is haunted. Does not mean that your house is is filled with lower level entities and darker energies. There has to be a group of many things happening. They have to be aligned in order for your house to be hunted or filled with lower and darker level entities. So please be smart. Do not fall into the error of thinking that you are hex or that you live in a cursed house just because you are experiencing one or two of these things. Be very mindful because the worst hex that you can put up on yourself is the one that you create all on your own by thinking that you are hex and that your house is hunted. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Today we are diving into the signs of a dark energy at your home. What causes it and how you can protect your space. Which is, I receive a lot of emails on a daily basis from you guys and sometimes so many of you guys feel so helpless and so hopeless thinking that their house is charged and feel infested with a lower level entity with evil dark energy. But rest assured that by the end of this video you are going to know how to take care of this situation. So let's start this video discussing the signs of the dark energy. Number one, the effects that's going to have on you. You suddenly are going to feel fatigue, sickness, anxiety, a lot of mental oppression because a dark energy which is can weigh really heavy on our bodies, on our mind, or on, on our psyche. And all these symptoms are not necessarily physical, but they are a result of your body carrying all this heavy energy. Pay attention, which is a good way for you to confirm that what you're feeling is related to the energy in your house is, do you feel better when you're not at home? That is something that you have to pay attention to. If that is the case, this can indicate that the energy is linked to the house and not to you. Number two, strange smells. And this is something that we discuss deeply in another video, and I'm going to put it right here. Please make sure to watch it. I will also link it in the description of this video. Smells are a big sign of lower level entities and low vibration evil entities lingering in your house. If you notice any unusual smells in your house that are not normal and out of the ordinary, just make sure to do the cleansings that I discuss in the video in which we spoke about the smells. Number three, something very common, hot or cold spots in your home. And when I say this is once you know that the temperature in your house, your windows are locked, you don't have any drafts coming in, you have the heater on for example, but you stand in a specific place in your house and you get the goosebumps or you're sitting down in your couch and suddenly you get goosebumps when you have your fireplace on. Something is up. Those are things that you need to pay attention to because lower level energy are very known to change and fluctuate the temperature around you. Also, which is in food for thought, this cold and hot spot can also feel heavy and dense. Number four, animal behavior. Now, we all know that cats are extremely sensitive and cats are the ones that are always looking at things and you know they're looking at something that you cannot see. Dogs are also sensitive but cats are a little bit more. But 
when your animals starting reacting out of the ordinary like for example your cat is hissing at something that you cannot see or your dog is pacing it looks like he's anxious all the hairs in the spine of your dog are just racing up please make sure that you pay attention to these things because animals are extremely sensitive if you have birds birds will also be very sensitive so please make sure that you pay attention to those things especially if you are experiencing any of the other signs that i already discuss number five unusual nightmares and sleep disturbances which is lower level entities evil energy can totally disrupt and affect your sleep they can cause a lot of nightmares and they can create that feeling of being observed and watch all the time you can even have sleep paralysis if you happen to have a lot of nightmares and dreams that pertain to danger and fear watch out which is since this could indicate unrest at home number six sudden mood changes dark energy can alter your mood which is can totally influence your emotions and it can turn you or somebody that you live with like dr jekyll and mr hyde you can go from somebody really good to somebody really evil in a split of a second this is particularly common in places that have a lot of dense energy and clutter pay attention if somebody at home or even even yourself have experienced that change of mood because this is a clear sign number seven objects moving sometimes we don't notice this type of things because we think like oh my god i'm crazy i thought i put this spoon over here and i put it over here but if this is something that you start catching that is happening very often you may want to pay attention and dig in a little bit because this could be a clear sign of lower level energies lingering around number eight insects and this is something that we talk about very lengthy in this video over here so just for you to check it out the presence of insects when I say the presence of insects, we're talking about vermin, we're talking about rats, we're talking about spiders, we're talking about scorpions, things like that, all type of vermin, which is, that's what I'm talking about. But particularly insects, if you have an infestation of flies in the middle of winter in a place that is absolutely clean and it's just in this one particular spot, I think you need to pay attention and do what you gotta do to clean up your space because that's a sign. Number nine, and this is also very common, and this is technology malfunctions. And you know what, which is, I know that sometimes some lights turn on and off on their own, especially if we have like a power surge, but I'm talking about like if you wake up in the morning and where lights are on in spots where they were not supposed to be on, tell you what, you feel it, which is, I have experienced this myself, and it's a little bit unsettling, but you're going to find lights that are not supposed to be on, especially in places that they shouldn't be on like if perhaps the life in your basement is on it's like and you don't go to your basement why is this light on you know tv tv turning on and off oh my god alexa and please we just leave me your stories in the comments in the videos oh my gosh i have some serious experiences with alexa and with google and i have shared them with you in some other videos i'm not going to talk about it because it's going to take too long but let me know in the comments if you have have any of these experiences because i really want to know but yeah electronics because which is spirits feed and interact with the energy and the waves of the electronics so pay attention to that the last sign that i'm going to give you and this not to say that it's only these 10 signs but these are some of the most common that i want to share with you but this one which is and i even think about it and i get goosebumps because i lived this myself before i was a witch number 10 your house is actually going to have physical you're going to see with your own eyes physical tangible signs of these evil energy lingering around. I can tell you on my particular experience, the walls of my house looked like they were bleeding. And no, I'm not talking that they were oozing blood, but the house will have stains, like dripping stains. And it was just me and Charlie living in this house of, of, of blood, like a red, red, I, that's all I can describe it as, as, as blood, which is. Anyways, your house is going to give you specific signs that is sick your house is sick it looks like your house is ill it has an illness it's sick so pay attention to the physical side of your home because it's going to tell you 
Now, let's get into why dark energy accumulates. Number one, and one of the most logical reasons, is residual energy from past residents. Houses absorb the energy of whoever is living in there. And when we say energy, is good and bad energy, which is, if past residents dealt with trauma, that's going to be imprinted in your walls. Any type of violence, if they practice dark magic, those intense emotions are going to be imprinted in your home, which is, and the wall in the floor, in any object in your home. Please be very mindful. Number two, and something that relates directly to that, negative events in that particular space. And when I said negative, I'm talking about extremely intense negative events, such as the death, any type of heavy violence, somebody unaliving themselves, altercations, any type of tragedy. They all leave behind a very strong signature, which is in very strong energy. And that can be very hard to shake you know, and to get rid of. This is sometimes called psychic scars. This imprint and this residual energy can make spots and places feel very uncomfortable. And they can also influence you. So whenever you experience anything like this, or if you knowingly move into a house in which you know that things like that happen, make sure that before you even leave in the house, you take care of all that and you cleanse and you cancel out any evil energy that may be lingering at your home. Number three, clutter and stagnation, which is every time I see those shows on hoarders and you see pile over pile over pile over pile of things. Listen, which is dark energy hides in those places. You see those shows, right? And you see all that hoarding and then they start removing everything and you see the remnants of animals that have, you know, passed away in the mess and you see carcass of like mouse or rats, sometimes even cats. And I can only imagine all the stuff that is festering in there. Listen, when your house is messy and your house is filled with clutter, understand that good energy is just not going to be able to flow. What you're going to have in there is stuck, dark, stagnant, putrid energy. So make sure that your home is always clean and you have absolutely no clutter, which is get rid of what you don't need, zero clutter. Number four, Curse or hunted objects, which is how many of us, because we're witches and we love this. We really do. I am one of those. But when you go to antique shops and you buy things, you do not know what you're bringing home, which is a lot of those items are hunted by whoever owned those items before. Like if you bring a little cabinet to your house, do you know what that cabinet was used for before? What the person that used to have this cabinet used to storage in that cabinet? My mind could run really wild, which is, so you have to be very careful because spirits sometimes attach themselves to their own things. They have some type of relationship with a specific drawer in which you save stuff Listen, put it this way. Do you have something in your house right now that you really love? Are you a witch and there's something in your house that you use to do hexes? I know I do. So what's going to happen with that when I no longer exist in this world? I have things that are cast iron over here that are going to outlast me by far. There's so many things that are going to stay in this realm when I am no longer in this realm. And when somebody grabs that, especially if it's something that I use to make hexes, who knows what could possibly be attached to that cauldron, for example. So people get really attached to their items, to their things, to their material stuff. And a lot of spirits can attach themselves to those type of objects. So whenever you go to a secondhand store or whenever you go to antique shop, I mean, those places even smell like past lives and people. Be very mindful and make sure that you cleanse, 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 cleanse before you really put anything like that into your home. And if they feel weird, the moment that you put them at home, get rid of them immediately. Do not even play with that. Number five, open portals 
and unresolved spirit activity. Listen, witches, do not think that you're the only witch in this universe. Perhaps you move into a house in which other witches used to live and there are open portals and there are unfinished business lingering around in that home. That can create some serious hunting in your home because you do not know what that other witch called upon, what they were playing with, if they were disrespectful, if they were challenging spirits. You just don't know witches. So please make sure that you are aware of that as well. Number six, which is, and this is something that touched me personally, negative emotions of somebody that lives with you. And which is, let me tell you something, when you have somebody carrying evil energy, I don't know about you, let me know if you have, but I have seen it with my own eyes. And I have shared this with you in other videos. It looks to me, and what I have seen, is like a giant stingray, black stingray, like hovering behind the person. And I'm telling you this and I get goosebumps, which is I'm having goosebumps right now because it's so vivid in my mind because I have seen it in not one, but two people and it is really unsettling. And if you live with this person and if you're a witch, right? Even if you're a seasoned witch and you're an avid witch, you have to fight this constantly and you can fight it out and clean out the person. But if the person does not believe in what you believe, and the person keeps bringing this darkness within himself or herself, listen, which is, you're going to have to make a decision because that is an uphill battle that you're going to have if somebody that you love does not want to help themselves and keeps bringing all that evil and negative your way. So be very mindful and be very aware of this. Number seven, improperly close rituals. So let's say your house is perfectly fine and you move in there and you're doing magic and you are not practicing protocol witches and you are not like closing and releasing your energy and whatnot. Listen, you can open portals. You can create and build up energy. And if you don't release that energy, which is that energy can create chaos and that energy can materialize and that energy can become a big problem in your home. If you're doing a ritual and it, it was abruptly interrupted, make sure that before you do anything, you release the magic or make sure that before you do a spell and you're going to raise energy, especially if you're going to do reversal magic or baneful type of magic, make sure that you're going to have the time to do and go through all your protocols. If when you finish your spell, you still feel charged, go outside, put your hands on the ground and give it back to Mother Nature. Mother Nature is so wonderful and so powerful that she will transmute and transform that energy. So make sure, which is that when you're doing your rituals, you are following through, closing and releasing. Number eight, location base. Your hunting the lower level entities in your home are based on your location. And sometimes, which is most of the times we can cleanse our homes, but there's houses out there that have no hope. You better off moving because there's some places that are built in sacred burial grounds because we're here today, but we were not here a hundred years ago. I'll give you an example. I live in Virginia and I live very close to many battlefields where people shed their blood and gave their lives in the civil war. So imagine if I build a home in a butterfield where a lot of people lost their lives. I will definitely have some issues with some of those unrest spirits. Some other times we build our homes in places that belongs to the fairy world. And most people think that fairies are these pretty Tinkerbell type of things. Fairies could be very evil and very nasty. And if you live close to elementals or fairies, then you may have a situation. You can honor and respect the spirits of the land something that people don't do we don't talk to the spirit of the land you have to let them know i'm here we love and respect and you have to honor them and acknowledge them perhaps that way you can make peace with the spirits that live around you but that could be some serious situation which is so serious this could be that sometimes it's better off if you move number nine is a lack of cleansing rituals if you are a witch or if you are just a regular person if you don't cleanse your house your house is going to be dirty, smelly, and disgusting. Spiritually, your house needs to be clean as well because you always want to have light and you want to have positive energy always flowing around. So cleansing, extremely important and make sure that you get into the habit of cleaning your house spiritually at least weekly. And number 10, something very obvious, somebody threw a hex or a curse into your house. Now I'm going to discuss 
discuss something with you very interesting. Areas in which this dark energy likes to attach to. Number one, closets and storage rooms. Anything that is dark, dampy, smelly, that is undisturbed. Those are places that as a witch you need to pay attention to when you're doing your cleansing. Number two, under the bed and furniture. How many people does not even look under their bed? Listen, which is the space under your bed needs to be clean, very clean all the time. And you need to put things in there to guard your dreams. That is a great advice that you should take because anything that is undisturbed, like sometimes sofas are really lowered to the floor that you cannot even put your Swiffer under there. Please make sure that you take attention to those places because they are undisturbed and lower level entities love to hang in there. Number three, mirrors. And I know there's a lot of controversy about mirrors. I love mirrors. If you love mirrors just like me, just make sure that you close them. It's a portal that is closed. Please be aware of this because lower level entities and dark energies love to hide themselves in mirrors because mirrors could be thresholds for them to come in and out easily. So if you have mirrors in your house, make sure that you close that portal. Number four, corners of rooms or spaces. And I have seen these particularly where the wall meets the ceiling like of your room. I've seen dark energies just hanging in those corners up there. That doesn't mean that it's necessarily only up there. You can also see them in any corners. It could be in any corners in rooms. They like to just hide in corners, shadows and stuff like that, corners. So be very mindful when you saging and when you're smudging, make sure that you go through the corners of every room of your home. Behind doors, especially doors that are never touched and that's where you're going to have certain things hiding because it's uninterrupted they, they are unseen in there you should activate your house when you go around your house activate your house move things especially when you're cleansing move things a lot of noise just awaken your house and make sure that all these evil energies flee your home number six rooms that are not used i don't know about you but all the rooms in my home are used and very active sometimes we do if you live all by yourself and you have a home that has four rooms there's one room that you never visit is the one that has the bed perhaps somebody used to live there and they don't live with you anymore or i don't know there's always a room that could give you the heebie-jeebies in which so certain entities can actually linger number seven of course under the stairs and any crawl spaces in your home that is very common these places again are dark they're undisturbed they're kind of smelly they could be dampy perfect place for these evil energies to linger number eight around electronics yes 100 lower level entities feed out of this energy especially to be able to manifest themselves so check out for that and make sure that when you're doing your cleansing pay extra attention to the spaces number nine bathrooms bathrooms can lock energy and sometimes people cry in bathrooms and there's some energy that could be released in bathrooms because this is the one spot in which we are alone you know how many of us cry so much when we're taking showers so there's a lot of energies that could be released in the bathroom bathrooms can carry dark energy i don't know if it's because of the water i really do not know why it is but yeah bathrooms can lock some of that dark energy number 10 basements and i'm going to tell you why basements are such a magnet to spirits pay attention witches basements are connected to earth because basements are most of the time about 99% of the time built under your house some wall of your basement is going to be underground this has such grounding energy which is and this can serve as an anchor for spirits because earth energy makes it so easy for spirits just to stay rooted plus spirits travel through that plane so yes which is it is very real basements are an anchor for entities so make sure that you always keep your basements light on the same tokens, addicts have the same type of attraction because addicts are considered more kind of like a threshold. So spirits like to linger there as well. Plus remember, which is that in addicts, a lot of people put things and they forget about it. Um, so you can find things that used to belong to the previous owner of your house that perhaps is no longer in this world. And you find pictures, you find things that at one point were very cherished and very loved. 
And suddenly somebody put it up in the attic and forgot about it. The attic is undisturbed, it's cluttery, it's dark. It's a forgotten space at home, 100%. Spirits love it there because they're completely unnoticed and undisturbed. Last witch is number 12, and surprise, surprise, dolls, 100%, especially dolls that resembles humans. A lot of people put a lot of energy and love into those dolls. There's some dolls that are cherished and they go unnoticed in the attic for example and someday somebody found it and they take it to a secondhand store or they take it to an antique shop and then you buy it and that doll is completely charged with the energy of the person that used to love it and then they put it in the attic. There's a lot of history and folklore about very evil dolls that exist nowadays in our lives are very popular. They are charged with the energy of the previous owner, either because they were neglected or because the previous owner lived through a lot of abuse, for example, or many other reasons. But dolls are definitely vessels for lower level entities. And you need to know this is true. So know this, okay? Make sure that if you have dolls, at home or if you're going to bring a doll from a place make sure they're clean to enter your space So now, which is we're going to be talking about protection, things that we can use and that we can do to stay clear from all these lower level entities and keep our house clean. The first things that we're going to discuss are going to be amulets. I'm going to give you 20, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time describing each one of them. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments. Number one, St. Benedict Medal. I have talked to you plenty about this medal. To me, it's one of the most powerful amulets out there. The St. Benedict Medal is considered the anti-evil metal. So if you want to get a good strong amulet, that's one to consider. Number two, Hamsa hand. It is also known to protect you against evil spirits. Number three, the evil eye. We have discussed this plenty and you know that the evil eye, it is meant to absorb any evil coming to you or any evil surrounding you. Number four, a cross. If you are more into Christianity and you feeling some type of way about witchcraft, you can have crosses and make sure that you charge them and they are blessed. If you can make crosses out out of iron nails, they are fantastic witches because iron is an incredible protection metal. Number five, azabache. That is something that we use a lot in Spanish brujería and that's something that every mom puts in their babies, azabache. Azabache is jet. So you want to have jet around your house and that will protect your home from any lower level entity. Number six, black tourmaline. One of my favorites. You can create grids, particularly in your room before going to bed to protect your environment and your surroundings. Number seven, pentacles. I love to draw pentacles in my windows. I could have holy oil and I could draw the pentacles in all of my windows as a measure of protection. Number eight, which is your own sigils. You can create your own sigils. I have a video over here on how to create your own sigils. I'll link it in the description of the video. But your own sigils are fantastic to keep your home protected protected. Number nine, Camandula Rosaries. These little beads, witches, will protect you against evil. They are pretty wonderful and it's used in Spanish brujería and some of our folk traditions. Number 10, Horseshoes Witches. We have talked plenty about horseshoes. Very important to have at home for protection and for prosperity. It's a great amulet to have. Number 11, black obsidian. Just as black tourmaline, black obsidian is fantastic to protect you. You can put it on you and you can put it around your home in order to keep you protected from any evil. Number 12, la cruz de caravaca. That is something that perhaps is not very common for my English speaker and my Caucasian people, but the cruz de caravaca is something used very commonly, at least in Puerto Rico, everybody has one. Or you can put it in your wall. And it's a protective amulet against evil. Number 13, tiger's eye is a great crystal that keeps you protected. Number 14, deer's eye. That one I have in my website. I love it. And you want to use it as a protective amulet and also as a good look. You can carry with you or you can put it in every door in your home. Number 15, if you are more into the Egyptian pantheon, you can have anks around your house. Number 16, you can do mojo bags if you like to practice hoodoo. Mojo bags are fantastic because you can fill them with a lot of protective items and use it as a, as a powerful amulet. 
Number 17, Milagros. This is used a lot in Mexican folk and Catholic magic. And they are small metal charms representing parts of the human body, animals, or even heart. And Milagros can keep you safe from any type of illness and will bless you as well. Number 18, if you are more linked to Native American magic, then you can use dream catchers. I think they're very powerful. I think anything that has to do with Native magic and spirituality, I think is extremely powerful. I love dream catchers, so that is something that you can use as well. Number 19, which is something that we have also discussed in this channel, which is bottle. You, If you're a witch, you should have a witch bottle. If you're able to bury it by the entrance of your house or in the places that you think are your trouble zones. That's where you want to have a witch's bottle. And number 20, <laughs> get a figure, get a statue of Las Siete Potencias Africanas, the seven African powers. They are so badass that nothing's going to cross them. Now, what are some powders that you can use to protect all your house? Number one, Cascara Sagrada. That is going to be a powder that you're going to make from the bark of the Cascara Sagrada tree. Number two, camphor powder. But camphor is toxic for animals. So if you have animals, perhaps this is not a great idea. But yes, camphor powder. That's one of my favorite things in order to cleanse and annihilate and sterilize my home. Number three, black salt. You can use black salt around your perimeter to protect your home and create a grid. Number four, you can use regular salt. Number five, you can use sulfur powder. They also sell sulfur in the way of chalk and many botanicas, so that's a great way for you to protect your home. Number six, eggshells, cascarilla. You can put cascarilla all over your house. Cascarilla also comes in a chalk, so you can create sigils and create your own markings in the walls. Number seven is something that may sound strange to you, but cemetery there from soldiers, cemetery there from police, or cemetery there, for example, from people that you love. That's a great way for you to to protect your home. Number eight, red brick powder or red ochre. It's super important, especially in hoodoo, in order to protect and just create boundaries. Number nine, powder dragon's blood. Very powerful for protection. Now let's talk about some waters that we can use in order to protect our home. You can use it as a spray, you can use it for floor washes, and some of them you can use as a bath. Number one, Florida water. Number two, holy water. Number three, particularly for floor washes, ammonia. You can use ammonia, you can dilute it in water, and you can use it for floor washes. Number four, Kananga water. I have sometimes Kananga water in my website, but you're gonna find this in Botanicas. Most of these waters, you're gonna find in Botanicas. Number five, rose water. Rose water is really good after you cleanse. You can also add rose water to bring love and positivity into your space, especially in dark, places in your house you want to put rose water you can even put lavender water and stuff like that after you cleanse just to keep it very positive number six tar water tar water is not easy to get and it's not easy to do you have to use the sod of a fireplace and you have to mix that with water and that is intended to get rid of spirits evil spirits lingering in your house tar water number seven salt water so water with salt that's what you're going to use for floor washer and to spray around. Number eight, four thieves vinegar. Great for protection. Excellent and easy to do. Number nine, war water. Also very easy to do. I have discussed that water throughout my videos. Great water for protection. Number 10, and this is something that is not used very common, but I absolutely love and I have worked wonderfully for me. Witch hazel. I love it for bath. I love it for floor washes. I love witch hazel. Last witches, if you want to do a little ritual around your house, I invite you for you to get some railroad spikes. I have some in my website if you cannot find them. You can wash them with salt water and you are going to anoint them with protection oils or with holy oil and you're going to go around the four corners of your property and you are going to drive them with a big hammer in each of the four corners of your property and as you drive the spikes into the ground recite some chants of protection i'll leave some examples in the description of the video once you finish you have created a barrier in your property
property and no entity can cross that barrier. That's a great way for you to protect your entire home. Which is there are excellent books that you can purchase that are going to teach you more about this type of protection. I'm going to show you some of my favorites and this is number one and by far my favorite books when it comes to the paranormal and how to protect myself. The Witch's Guide to the Paranormal by J. Allen Cross. I strongly suggest that you get this book if you want to learn how to protect yourself from the paranormal. Another one of my favorite authors is Michelle Bellinger. She has this book, The Ghost Hunter Survival Guide. And I know I'm talking about ghost hunting, but you don't need to be a ghost hunter in order to enjoy this book. You are going to get a lot of really good information. Of course, which is, you know, my wonderful book that I have loved for years by the amazing Jason Miller, Protection and Reversal Magic. This is a classic book from Dion Fortune and it's called Psychic Self-Defense. This is also an audible. This is probably for free in Hoopla that you can listen to. It's a classic, it's an old book, but it's a great book for you to have or to read and acquire some knowledge. Last, which is uh, one of the most amazing authors that we have nowadays, which is a Christopher Pensack. This is an old book and it's hard to find. It's called The Witch's Shield. Another great book. I will link these books in the description of the video so you can have them in case you want to purchase them. And I will link some other ones as well for you. Which is, I hope this video helped you understand that you could be living legit in a haunted house. A haunted house is not necessarily the ones that we see in a movie. There could be a lot of darker energy lingering around and they like to attach and latch themselves to our homes if they have the correct environment. So please make sure that you're aware and that you know how to fight it back and reclaim your home because I'm giving you tools over here for you to protect yourself. Please make sure not to jump into conclusions and believe that your house is haunted just because you experienced one of these things. Make sure there are many things happening before you conclude that your house is haunted. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel and share this video because you do not know the people that may need this information which is remember that i am in facebook white raven and witches lair also a lot of the things that i suggest for you to use for cleansing i already have in my website white raven and witches lair.com go visit me because i have a lot of stuff for all your magical endeavors which is if you have any questions you can drop them here in a comment in the video so we all can benefit from my answer remember that i do not work for people and if you want to spell i'm going to tell you to check my videos because I have almost 600 videos over here with spells to help you. Other than that, which is thank you so much for being here yet another Monday. I love my magic Mondays with you. Remember that knowledge is power, so I invite you for you to keep researching and learning. But with all that power and all that knowledge, you must discern and you have to stay so very wicked. I'll see you next Monday, which is I love you.